Okay, hello camp friends. How are you? It's so good to be here. We are one year in from kicking off these quarterly, we refer to them as donor webinars, but really it's for all of our camp friends. And I know that we've got some of our camper families on uh, watching today and we've got our volunteers, we've got donors and we've got our friends around the campfire with us. It was one year ago that we started coming to you in your homes, just like we are right now. You're going to see that my friend Stephanie Bellman, our program manager, joins us from her home as well. But we are very much at camp. We, our families are enjoying family sessions. We've got an entire crew at camp on any given day. We have many of our corporate friends coming for camp creator days. We've had some youth groups out. We are safely gathering and convening and taking the most advantage of camp as it can be taken advantage of this year. So this video is being recorded. Um, so we'll be able to share this out with whomever you'd like to share it with. Um, particularly for those of you that are our camper families, you might see some familiar faces in just a little bit um, as we get to our photo journal from the summer. Um, but as you have questions, they are welcome to be put into the chat or emailed to us later. We're happy to respond to those, um, especially as you hear anything that is shared, please remark, make a comment, let us know what you think, what you're experiencing. And if you're not hearing about something and you want to, that's equally as important to what we do choose to share, but there is so much and we wanna make sure that we meet your needs and keep you fully informed of all that we were able to do with embracing our rally cry of Camp Possible for 2021. Um, and let me just pause and stop here too that um, we have, the utmost of care and attention to the safety and well being and health of our camper families, our campers, our staff, our volunteers, and we are for sure not out of this pandemic moment of COVID. So we have continued to honor all of our COVID safety protocols that we established in April. We have not lightened those, we have not lessened those, we have not wavered from them from the very beginning. So we have been able to safely navigate this summer and going into fall. And in a minute, but not yet, you're gonna hear more from, from Bells on how we manage that through the summer and the results of our safety protocols. But I wanted to rest assured for you that it is continuously a priority of ours and in conversations with our team, the advisement and guidance of our medical advisory board on a weekly basis, if not daily, how do we navigate what needs to be adjusted and how do we make decisions that are informed and always again with the safety first of campers, because core value six is with trust comes relief and that is only possible if we honor that safety so. Without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to Stephanie Bellman, who will first go over how we spent our summer, and then I'll talk about what's on deck, and we'll make sure that we close with any questions. So, hey, hey, Stephanie Bellman, what does Bells have to share with us as our program manager, wearing her Jill of all trades hats? You can find her certified on archery, the high ropes, the low ropes, everywhere, and then elevating into our program manager, she oversees the most thoughtful of outcomes for the experience that we want our families and our campers and our volunteers to have. But here's Stephanie Bellman tell, telling us all about what we do this summer. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. I am going to talk all about this summer um, and all of the exciting things that we have done. Uh, but first, I want to take a step back and look kind of bigger picture um, and talk about just our vision for camp and um, the big picture goals. Um, so we, if you want to go to the next slide, Deej, um, we say that we really want to be the first prescription in holistic healing for children with serious illnesses and their families. So I wanted to read it off just like it says on the slide, um, because I think that's really important and I just want to acknowledge it. Um, and also that is really our goal. That's what we want to be. And today I'm really going to talk about what we've done this summer to take a step forward um, to get to that goal, to reach it. So. If we want to go to the next slide, um, we have done a lot this year. Um, so this year we served 74 families um, plus one service dog. We can't leave that out. That was exciting. Um, over seven camps, 26 of those 74 families were first time family camp families. That's huge. That's very exciting to have that many first time families, um, especially in this year, in 2021, when we're in the midst of a pandemic, um, to have that many families that trust us, um, that felt safe coming to camp, 
um, that's really a huge responsibility for us to make camp safe, um, to make sure families feel safe, to feel that trusted. Um, we didn't take that responsibility lightly and we're glad that our families were able to feel that way and were able to have that experience. Um, we also had families coming from all over to experience camp. The farthest distance traveled this year was 489 miles. Wow. Um, so that's a fun, a fun little fact we wanted to put in there and celebrate. We also had seven opening campfires, one of which was a flying horse farm's first. Um, because of the weather and because of COVID, we couldn't just when it was rainy, you know, go inside and do an indoor campfire this year. Um, so for the first time ever, we had mini campfires in each village. Um, it was so fun. So all of our staff and volunteers put up tents in the middle of each village. We had three simultaneous campfires. Um, they were so fun, so cozy. The families were on their porches. Um, we had our microphones out there and we're singing songs and doing skits. It was a blast. It was the first time ever in Flying Horse Farms history. Um, so a huge thing to celebrate there. That was one of our seven opening campfires. Um, we also had 300, more than 300 meals delivered to cabins this year. So our K crew has been busy. Um, and maybe the biggest thing to celebrate is that we have had zero in-camp COVID-19 instances. That's huge, 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 huge. And I'm going to talk more about our COVID-19 precautions in a little bit, but want to take a moment to celebrate that now. Um, Deej, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, we are still serving the diagnoses that we would traditionally see in a regular summer or family camps. Um, so for those of you familiar with camp, these are all going to look really familiar. For those of you that maybe are a little newer to camp, I'm going to run through them uh, pretty quickly. So we're seeing um, craniofacial differences, GI diagnoses, anyone with any heart conditions diagnoses, um, anything like that, hematology, kidney diseases, di any kidney diagnoses really, um, oncology, of course, pulmonary diseases, um, rare diseases, rheumatology, I'm going to skip one and come back to it, sickle cell disease, and then siblings. Um, so some of you may see that and think, well, that's not a diagnosis. That seems sort of, that doesn't fit in. One of these things is not like the other. Um, but we serve our siblings um, the siblings of our campers, because we really see a need there. Um, you know, our diagnosed campers get a lot of attention because of their medical needs, um, because of all the things that go along with it. And sometimes that means that their siblings don't get as much attention or maybe have some other needs because of that, some different needs. And so we see a need there and we make sure that they are getting as much attention, that they get some special time um, at camp as well, you know, they uh, need that just as much as their diagnosed siblings. And so we make sure that we make the time for them that they get this special experience too. So just like a traditional year, we are serving the same diagnoses, which is very exciting that we're able to do that this year as well. We are also staying very safe while we're serving all of those diagnoses. Um, everyone who comes on site is getting a COVID test. Um, we, so that's staff, volunteers, and campers and families. Um, we have lots of new protocols in place. So everyone is wearing a mask. Um, we are increasing our social distancing. Um, so families are staying very separate. So everyone is in their own cabin. Each family is in their own cabin. As we go through the activity areas, it's one family per activity area and this fun little rotation, which we have found lots of um, benefits from that we didn't even know we were gonna find. Um, I'll tell a quick story about that since I see archery right there. Um, so, you know, as they're in these activity areas, they really get to dive into them um, because it's so like personalized. Um, they get to really take ownership of that area. There was one family, it was a mother and a daughter who were at archery. Um, this is a funny story to tell. So the daughter was not super into archery, but the mom just loved it. She discovered that was her thing. So the daughter shot a couple of times and was like, cool, mom, I'm, let's go. 
let's go get some games and do something else. And the mom turned to her and was like, no, we have done so many things this weekend and this is my thing. This is my time to just do my thing. And everyone who was up there, it was amazing to see that she was just like so into it because camp is just as much for the caregivers as it is for the campers. Um, and she was just so into it. So to see all of the counselors be like, all right, we're making this happen. So one of them was like, all right, mom, we're gonna keep doing archery over here. And the rest were like, cool. So camper, what game did you wanna play? We have some cards, we have some games up here and just like made it happen. So like mom got her hour to just like do what she wanted. And then uh, camper got a time to play a game. Mom got that time, camper got that time and just like had the ownership of that space to make it what they wanted. And it was so cool to see where if, you know, in a traditional year, yes, they would have gotten their own time, but it would have been very different. So that's been a cool thing to see. Um, we also have lots of cleaning protocols, of course. Um, so after one family is in an area, we completely clean it before the next family comes in. Um, and then we're also making sure that all of our staff are vaccinated um, and before they're working with our families. So that's another very important safety protocol that we have put in place. Um, Deej, if you wanna to go to the next one, I'm gonna talk about arrival. So I talked about how all of our campers, families, volunteers, everyone is getting a COVID test when they arrive, um, but our arrival is much more magical than that. So uh, when you drive in through the gates, you go in, you get your COVID test. Um, and once that comes back negative, um, you're going to go in and our families this year, every single one of them gets to drive through the hole in the wall. So typically they would walk through, which is very fun, very magical in itself. But this year, um, personally, I think it's even more magical because for each car, we get to open that barn door and they get to just like see that reveal of camp through the hole in the wall. Um, there are confetti cannons that go off and it's just a whole like show for them to go through. It's very fun. So they get to go through the hole in the wall, drive down the center path, which is a first for this year too, for cars to go right up to the cabins to stop and unload. Um, and then we're calling Camp Flying Horse Farms Resort this year because our theme is family vacation. So they stop there right at the cabins and we can help them unload their luggage if they would like um, so they can move in right there. And then when they go in um, this year, because meals are in the cabins, we have them fully stocked. Um, so they have a dining room table essentially in the middle. Um, they have a refrigerator, they have a whole pantry. Um, so families go in and some of them, the kids will like run and they're like, we've got chocolate milk, we've got orange juice and snacks, what's going on? And then some of the parents go in and they're just like, wow, everything we need is here. We have a refrigerator. We can keep our kids meds right here with us. We don't have to walk down to the wellness this year. It's amazing. So it's just those little things that have made you know a huge difference in more ways than we even expected. So it's been really magical to see. And then once they're all moved in, we go to activities, um, which, you know, once they get going are just like a regular camp. I told you that story about archery and it's just in all of the areas like that. Spotlight is one this year that's been completely redone. So in the past, it's really focused on um, music theater and dance. And this year it does as well, but we've added a technology component. And I know we are low tech at camp, and we're realistic at camp. Um, kids are gonna leave camp and they're gonna go back on YouTube. They're gonna go back on TikTok and whatever other social media uh, they're on. And we just wanna give them the tools and the resources to be able to do that in a safe and appropriate way. Um, and so we've turned Spotlight into a recording studio where they can record podcasts with their family. They can record um, music videos, they can record music whatever they would like to do in there. And that's been a huge hit and something that's been so cool to see and to listen to some of the conversations that have happened between you know, parents and kids and siblings as they've recorded podcasts together, just like the amazing conversations um, and jokes that you hear in there are just incredible. So that's been very, very, very cool to see. Um, but along with this year, we've also uh, learned some things as well. Um, oh, wait, no, before I talk about that, 
we've done so much this year, it's hard to keep it all straight. Um, so while, while we've been doing all of this as well, we've also been doing virtual camp. Um, so we've done our camp at home, um, camp in a box activities. So that just finished last week or the week before was our last one. And so that is not only connecting through a screen, but we also are sending out boxes of the physical materials that participants need to participate. So they can choose from one of three activities, they get on the screen and we do them together with their peers and someone leading them through that. And then they also get a chance, so it's a good mix of structured and unstructured, they get a chance to do a cabin chat over the screen throughout the summer. Um, so just connecting with peers in that unstructured way is really important as well. Um, we're also doing a virtual ranger program this year and that um, is, about halfway through, we're meeting once a month. We're coming up on our um, weekend ranger program experience. So that's gonna be two full days of rangers, um, which we're really excited about. That focuses on servant leadership, community building, self-identity, lots of reflection. That's gonna be incredible. And then we have our caregiver fireside chats coming back in the fall. Um, those are gonna start up in September and October. Um, those are for our caregivers. They're going to focus on IEPs, 504s, so getting back into the swing of school, um, and then also mindfulness, because who couldn't use some more mindfulness tips? Yeah, Nicole. <laughs> um, Bells, I know that the foreshadow of what's to come is the lessons learned, and I want to pause before we get there, because as, as you said, we've done so much, and this literally is something that's running in the background of what we know traditional camp programming to be, which is on-site. Nothing could ever replace on-site programming. The team did an incredibly smart and thoughtful decision to go all in on family camp. We were prepared to host up to three residential programs this year and realized that we never wanted to take something away with the unpredictability of man managing a pandemic. And so to have a really fantastic, thoughtful, outcome-based experience for family, we also knew that there might be a place still for virtual. And I know that with your leadership, Bells, we really also adjusted and said, but virtual isn't the best outcome for all. So adding that best of was one, there is a place for Flying Horse Farms to penetrate through the isolation when we're not together in person and yet not oversaturate. And so I just wanted to stop and acknowledge and affirm that what this slide represents is the additional programming that our team has done but not overdone because our, the families that we serve are often living in isolation, even pre and post pandemic. And how can we foster connection, sense of community, even entertainment that is safe, educational, engaging with peers that they can relate to, but also resourceful. We had no idea that there was this void, you know, it was a blind spot for us. We know how valuable family camps are. We know how valuable parent and caregiver programming is when together, but listening early on a year ago, I need this more often and I can't travel. I, I can't commit to showing up to a parent program at the hospital or a local venue. And so being able just to tap in from home with the experts that we bring to the screen to talk about school IEPs, mindfulness. We had a pharmacist in the past we've talked about. We had Big Bird um, and an adolescent psychiatrist share about mental health and living with a child that also lives with a serious illness. It's a fantastic place for Flying Horse Farms to be that thought leader convener um, and to serve our families year round to your point, like the whole family needs healing and joy. And this is something that we can do even when camp's not in session on site. So I just personally wanted to with a bias, of course, but pause to say, this is a huge piece of programming that's been added. It's not going away, but we're being as thoughtful and intentional about outcomes with our virtual as we would our on site. So just wanted to acknowledge that to you. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. And now we're going to get to um, the things that we've learned through this year. Um, there are lots of them. So these are just some highlights. Um, so we learned that Flying Horse Farms for many of our families was the first place that they felt safe enough to visit since the beginning of the pandemic back in March in 2020. Um, so I've said this many times, uh, but I'm going to say it one more time. That's a huge, huge 
huge responsibility and a huge amount of trust placed on us um, to create a safe space, um, you know, in general, but then especially this year, you know, for their health, you know, for them to feel like this is a place they can go, um, you know, where they have a child with a serious illness and for them to be safe. Um, so for them to feel that way and to come and leave and still feel that way is just huge um, and great feedback to have. And so we're really grateful that they have felt that way and, you know, really taking on that responsibility of continuing that, that safety and keeping that a priority. Um, we also got the feedback that family camps offer, offer, woof, offer a kind of respite um, that families are unable to find anywhere else. So this is feedback that we get most years, I would say pretty much every year um, about our family camps. And I'll speak for myself on this going into this year, I was a little like, oof, I don't know if it's gonna be quite the same this year. I think that might dip a little, um, but we were able to this year keep, you know, keep our family camps feeling the same, being able to still offer that respite um, and that relaxation for our families and our caregivers um, while keeping them safe and our programming, you know, in a way that they, they were able to, you know, feel safe during a pandemic while they were there, but also get that rest and that relaxation. So that is, you know, a great thing that we learned and also that we celebrate. Um, we also learned that for Flying Horse Farms, or for children who come to Flying Horse Farms, it's really a safe space, both physically and emotionally, um, that allows them to connect better with their family. Um, we often will hear from parents that when they get to camp, their kids will start opening up about what they're going through at school, um, what things they're stressed about or worried about, um, just things in their life that when they're at home, they don't typically talk about, but because they're at camp and they're just comfortable in the space, they'll start talking about it. And then the other side of that is that parents also are more comfortable talking about that as well, because they know that if a conversation gets difficult and they don't quite know how to handle it, they have the backup of our psychosocial team. Um, and along those lines, we've started using the word psychosocial at camp and in camp with our campers. Um, for those of you that don't know, we used to call our psychosocial team the Purple People Team. Um, and we've made that switch to psychosocial for a couple of reasons, but really because we want our campers to, one of our, our goals at camp is for our campers to become more autonomous and independent and really to take charge of their medical care in whatever ways that they can. And so if one of those ways is teaching them terminology that they can use when they need help, why not? So if a camper leaves camp and they're like, oh, I need a purple person right now, no one's gonna know what that means unless they've been to camp before. But if they say, I need a psycho, I need psychosocial, so, oof, can't talk. I need psychosocial support, people are gonna know what that means. So we're really setting our campers up for success by changing that terminology and using those real world terms in camp. Um, we also learned, I, I mentioned that we've delivered over 300 meals to cabins this year. Um, we've learned that we can not only do that, but we can do that while managing all of the dietary needs of our campers, um, which is huge. So typically that all happens in one place. It's all in one building in the dining hall. Everyone's in the same spot. Um, but the logistics of taking all the meals to cabins, but then taking all the meals to cabins with the additional meals um, that are needed to meet the dietary needs of our campers. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. And because of the incredible K crew and the incredible um, volunteers and staff we have for our special diets, we've been able to handle that. And it's been incredible that we've been able to serve our campers in that way. Um, and then I talked about it a little bit before, but Spotlight's a hit. We've gotten lots of feedback um, and seen lots of great videos that have shown that um, our families and our campers that go up to Spotlight just love it. Um, if we know what TikTok is, we understand why, um, but it's just a hit up there. And so we're hoping to really do more with Spotlight in the future.
Um, but those are some great things that we've learned. Um, and then we have a few just quotes from, from families. I won't read the whole thing, but I'll read a few just excerpts from it. Um, so this is a first time family um, talking about a couple of their kids. So they have Allie who felt really comfortable and so did her brother who suffered from general anxiety and usually doesn't transition too easily. Um, so they were able to come to camp and because of the environment that we fostered, both felt very comfortable and at ease when they arrived. Um, and then also this was the first time since she was born that someone other than myself or my husband prepared food for Allie. That's huge. For a parent to be able to trust someone else for the first time to prepare food for their child because of their dietary needs, that's a huge milestone. Uh, and that is putting a lot of trust in someone else. Uh, seven years, Bells, right? To see, I'm presuming mom, right? Mm -hmm. In seven years, that's a lot of meals. That's a lot of pressure. And that is what our families live with every day from rise to bed through the night. Um, as they navigate by seven years, you're talking school age. So how do they go to school? What is the worry they, that they leave the house with, that they come home with? To play mm -hmm. at someone else's house isn't always possible because of snacks, access to food, and little kids don't always know what you can or cannot touch or eat. Um, it's powerful. The basic needs. Yeah. And just to imagine just that one weekend of not having to worry about that, how much relief that must bring. Yeah. It's huge. Awesome. And then we also have a quote about from the parent of um, our camper Hayden, um, who's about to start school and move again for the second time in three months. Um, and they say he seemed really anxious lately, but the minute that his feet hit the ground at camp, he was a different kid. And it was also great for me to know that if the conversation got hard, I could call 511 and one of the psychosocial team members would have been there to help. So this is again, talking about how um, camp is really that safe space for our campers and for our camper parents, you know, that whole family, that they really can open up when they're there, they can feel safe when they're there. And then that the caregivers feel it as well. Um, that they know they have that backup and that support if needed, if a conversation gets a little difficult. So that those are the things that we've been up to this summer. Um, we've done a lot and I'm gonna pass it over to Nicole to talk about what's coming up next. Perfect, thank you, Velman. You're the best, you rock, it's so great. Um, okay, so what's up next? Next slide, please, Sarah Deej. And don't go far, Bellman, because I actually did have a couple of questions come in from some folks. Um, and so with our fall programming, be, be on deck for that, will ya? Okay, great. Uh, um, so as we look at our calendars, we're all gathered virtually today, but we are all eager, ready, and enthusiastically uh, awaiting the ability to get together. So let's get together and support camp first with our awesome sponsors and friends of camp and donors of ANF. Um, Abercrombie and Fitch Challenge is on and it is live and there will be music and there will be fundraising. So while the event is sold out, good job Abercrombie friends, you can still be a sponsor and have tickets or the virtual tickets are still available for $25 up to $100. On the next slide, please, Sarah Deej. We also have other opportunities of supporting Flying Horse Farms through the challenge, which will provide a match to us because $1 can turn into $2 and that just makes more camp possible. So either um, your company or you as an individual can become a sponsor, which allows you a whole bundle package of tickets to be available, or you can go online to the ANF Challenge site and then just make sure that you designate to Team Flying Horse Farms and you will see that we are the top running camp right now as the challenge raises money for all of our sister camps across the globe. We are all friendly but who doesn't love a little challenge by choice competition and as the local camp of um, for the challenge we always think that we should be on top because we we love our friends at ANF so please help us maintain that standing. Um, so that's the NF challenge. Um, after the last Friday in September, we've got then the first Friday in October, which is the 10th month to celebrate our 10 year anniversary. So <sighs> let's do please come to camp. So you can get your warm up at the challenge. 
and then come and actually experience the real campfire on site at camp in action with camper families. We are honoring um, the inaugural Firestarter Award to Dr. Jerry Boyle from the Cleveland Clinic, who really was the spearhead of the establishing of Heart Camp Week. And then he gathered his friends, um, Dr. Patty Reamer and Dr. Joe Ross, and they were lovely and fantastic. And it is a robust week for our heart camp kids. Um, and then Pat Agatiza, who joins Dr. Boyle at every camp session. She has hosted many a fundraiser, a friendraiser, and brings volunteers and friends and family with her to also volunteer and be a fantastic camp ambassador. So without them, over a decade ago, participating in Flying Horse Away, making sure that from the very beginning we had medical safety and oversight, Dr. Boyle and Pat have been our fire starters, and we are so excited to honor them on Friday, October 1st, there will be music, there will be food, there will be tours, there will be singing that you can participate in or not, but I would imagine that after you come to camp, you will for sure be singing um, and maybe even doing a little dancing. So, and maybe a little uh, fanny pack action might be in the, in the works too. So October 1st, come celebrate 10 years at camp with us. And then after that, we anticipate there being, um, next slide please, Sarah. Volunteers, how can you not come to camp after everything that Bell's walked us through? Oh, go back, go back to fall, go back to fall. Sarah, volunteering, thank you, right there. We're not, we're not to snowflakes yet, not yet. We're going to wrap up summer camp this weekend um, with our last family camp session. We've got some events and experiences, and then we're rolling right into volunteering this fall. So we've got three family camps and an AYA camp coming up. Um, and so we still have volunteering available. And as we've been sharing throughout this last half hour, our COVID safety protocols are proving to keep us safe, to mitigate the risk. And so we've actually ex extended the opportunities of volunteers to provide family sidekicks. Our families love those. It is a you know coveted position for volunteers to be attached to a family for a weekend and allow them even more freedom to navigate the camp property. So please check out um, Robert at flyinghorsefarms.org if you'd like to volunteer. And I know that there was a question to AYA Bellman. What does that mean? And what is the view and perspective of outcomes for our AYA friends? Yes, so AYA is adolescent and young adults. Um, so it is for participants who are 16 to 21. It focuses on giving folks another um, camp experience as well as transitioning um, just you know out of camp and into adulthood. Um, so we are really, that's really what we're focusing on. What happens during that camp um, is lots of camp magic. Um, so lots of camp activities. Um, there's gonna be arts and crafts, think like elevated arts and crafts, though, think like a, a painting along um, on a canvas, um, archery, wood shop, all of those activities we love, um, as well as some additional ones that are gonna teach you some life skills. So um, maybe some automotive care, um, maybe some self-care, um, maybe some sewing, like how to sew a button on if one pops off your clothes and you need to fix it. Um, maybe some transitioning to adult care with the medical team, um, as well as like how to make your own salad dressing, things like that. So um, lots of fun things that you can apply to the real world, as well as some fun things that you can apply to the real world, but also are very campy and fun. Um, so lots of great things. Perfect. Yes, our AYA weekend, Adolescent Young Adult is what that stands for, is an extension of all of the intentional outcomes that the Flying Horse Farms program team does to establish that when they come as a first-time camper, perhaps as a family member, they can be under the age of eight, but residential programming starts at eight all the way through 15, 16, 17, 18, but then they bridge over into AYA. And at every stage of life, there are different outcomes on that age um, spectrum. We are one of the only camps that provides that longitudinal experience that evolves. So that way there is an arc for them to have that sense of belonging, build on their autonomy from the point of a young person coming to camp, not knowing that it's a medical specialty camp. They just think that they're there to have fun with their friends and that's awesome. We don't want them to be thinking about their diagnosis to becoming their own health advocate. 
How do they read their medication? How do they go from pediatric to adult care, as Bellman described, with our AYA campers? Um, so it's phenomenal that we've been able to build on that from family and youth all the way to AYA. So bravo there. Um, and then again, running in the background, there was a question about um, will we continue virtual programming? So with the significance and focus of outcomes where we are constantly refining the best of, Bellman, unless I'm wrong, we will continue to hone and make sure that we are meeting campers, camper families, parent and caregiver needs where it makes sense for us. So, and where it makes sense for us is where there can be the greatest outcome to provide that connection and resource that they cannot find anywhere else. And it will be through our partnerships, through other experts um, in our hospital partnerships and in the community that we will be the concierge and bridge to those, but also knowing that you have to have camp entertainment and connection. And that is what our program team just does a smashing job of. So anything to add on that, Bells? Perfect. Now we can go after we get through fall, the foreshadow is snowflakes are coming around the corner. And with the fall of snowflakes, we switch up the, the, the we flip the switch up to light up camp. So it was a spectacular extravaganza last year with over 2000 cars coming through the gate. We raised close to $40,000. It was awesome. So it's not about the money. It's about the people coming through the gates. It's about making sure that that camp magic continues to razzle and dazzle instead of having camp go quiet and dark because that camp prep season is so critical and important when we're working with our medical volunteers and our medical contacts to ensure that we have camper safety when we all come back for sessions next summer um, in April and May. But to get us through, we'll open the gates again on November 25th and, um, and be there for six weeks. So feel free to plan for a winter drive through camp. Perhaps you want to gather your family and volunteer one night. It's really fun. It's fantastic. You get to ride a golf cart in the snow. How often do you get to do that? Um, and camp is just always beautiful. So why not experience it year round? And on the next slide, speaking of experiencing camp, hosting events, gathering with people, we hope that you know that we continue to be open and launch our social enterprise. We've piloted and beta tested a number of corporate gatherings. We've had retreats with Ohio Wesleyan University. We've had Kenyon College in the past. Thank you Columbus School for Girls for hosting your senior day um, in the spring. We've had a youth program come out for a residential experience. We're talking with band camps. Um, we've also had our local Morrow County United Way duck race on our waterfront. And we've also have a few families that have secured some dates for holiday gatherings into um, the November and December holiday time, especially with that whole, you know, the COVID piece, but we still want to gather safely and know that we at Flying Horse Farms can do that for you too. Um, next slide we'll share. Questions, but I think we've had them all along the way. So it's been fantastic. And um, if you want to host an event, I had another question pop in. How do I learn more? If I want to host an event at camp, uh, you can go to, I think it's rentals at flyinghorsefarms.org. Otherwise on our website, info at, um, at the very bottom of the homepage, it says rental inquiries, and it'll take you to a landing page that you can put all of your information and we'll respond to you in 24 to 48 hours and we'll make that happen for you. But we hope that you have a phenomenal rest of your summer. We hope that you stay safe, stay healthy. And Belle, should we put hands in and do a final um, cha-cha-cha hurrah? How about that? Okay, perfect. Ready, on three. One, two, three, cha-cha-cha hurrah! Happy anniversary for joining us virtually. Happy 10 years to camp. We hope to see you at Campfire on October 1st. And until then, please be well, my friends. Bye.